Sunday for the Easter season. There's more Sundays left and Easter is done. Next week will be Ascension, and then the following week is Pentecost, and the Easter season is done. And remember, the Easter season in the Catholic Church is 50 days after Easter Day. We know how to celebrate 50 days, not just one day. We just keep on going for 50. You know, that's good. Uh, even after Christ left, which will be next week, we still party on for more days after that. So it's, it's a cool thing. Keep the life going. Our opening hymn is going to be number 80 in the Missalette side. Took a little bit of time today because we had to bring the church back here from the wedding chapel last week. And those of you that were there last week, thank you so much. It was a good send off for Richard.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the love of our Father, the peace of Jesus, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, also with you. Today is May 1st. May is dedicated to Mary. Mary. Thus the vestments. My Marian vestment, the fleur de lis, if you are of French descent, is a symbol of Mary. On the Quebec flag, it is that of Mary as Quebec province is dedicated to Mary. So we have a, a Mary investment for the parish. We all have our share of human troubles and anxieties, which rob us of that priceless gift, and that gift is inner peace. In today's gospel, we will hear Christ say to us, don't let your hearts be troubled. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Let us now call upon Jesus, the giver of peace. Lord Jesus, you heal our troubled minds and our restless hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promise us the Spirit who will remind us of all that you have told us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us your peace, a peace that the world cannot give. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May our loving parents have mercy on us, forgive us our troubles and anxieties, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, Peace I leave with you. My own peace I give you. A peace which the world cannot give. This is my gift to you. Lord, take pity on our troubled hearts and grant us through your Holy Spirit that peace and unity in your kingdom which lasts forever and ever. Amen. Peace was Christ's parting gift to his church. Let us now share this gift with one another. Thank you. 
sing for Gloria. <laughs> Animals, 
and from unchastedness. You will be well advised to avoid these things. Farewell. The Word of God. said to his disciples, Those who love me will be true to my word, and God will love them. And we will come to them and make our dwelling place with them. Those who do not love me do not keep my words. Yet the message you hear is not mine. It comes from Abba God who sent me. This much 
have I said to you while I was still with you? But the paraclete, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom God will send in my name, will instruct you in everything, and the Spirit will remind you of all that I have told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. But the kind of peace I give you is not like the world's peace. Do not let your hearts be distressed. Do not be fearful. You have heard me say, I am going away, but I will return. If you really love me, you would rejoice because I am going to our God. For God is greater than I. I tell you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will still believe. The good news of our salvation. Praise Lord Lord Jesus Christ. There's a very important dynamic in the different readings at Mass in the Easter season. Jesus is risen. He is present in our lives. He appeared to his friends multiple times after the resurrection. He's real. He ate and drank with them. They touched his wounds. No one doubted that he has risen. But, think about it. He seems to pop in and out of the picture. He appears to his friends in the upper room and then he vanishes from their sight. He appears to the men who were on the road to Emmaus and were walking sadly away from Jerusalem. He opens their hearts to recognize him, and then what does he do? He vanishes from their sight. Isn't it true that the same dynamic often applies to our own lives? We have our mountaintop moments, when the sun is shining and we sense the presence of Christ, and then he seems to vanish. Jesus speaks about this in the gospel that was just proclaimed. He states, you heard me tell you I'm going away, and I will come back to you. I've told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may still believe. He's referring to his death and resurrection. But, he also is referring to our daily life. There are moments when Christ seems to be absent. Do you believe that he is coming back? Even more, do you believe that he is present even in those moments? You know, there's a great lesson from all of this. Easter is God's invitation to see with the eyes of faith. Christ is asking us to believe what he told us. I will seem to go away sometimes, but I'm coming back. He was the original Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm coming back. I'll be back. The Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that faith, along with faith, comes hope comes love, is a virtue infused by God into our souls to make us capable of living as his kids and meriting eternal life. By faith we freely commit our entire selves to God. So faith changes the way we see the world. God is present in every moment. And every moment we can freely commit ourselves to Him. He's trying to help us see something of His presence in all the individual events of our lives, both good and bad. Easter is a call to see with the renewed eyes of faith. Gianna Simone is someone who learned to see with the eyes of faith. She's an actress. You know who she is? She's relatively today's actress. She's not an oldie. She's a newbie. Okay. She suffered from emotional and physical abuse growing up. 
she said, I had attempted to take my own life and was sent to a place for troubled girls. I felt I didn't belong there, but I did. I did belong there. I wanted my own room because she was a star. She should get this, right? They said, don't worry. So they put me in a room with another girl. This other girl, Anne, had her own serious struggles. She told me she had to try to commit suicide many times. Simone explained, I didn't know what to say to her. The only thing I could tell her was about Jesus and about God and about Jesus' love for each of us that transcends and overwhelms everything else in our life. He loves you, she said to Ann, even more than your parents love you. The next morning, they had a sharing circle, and the doctor said, Ann, why don't you start off with sharing something? And Ann said, to be honest, I don't feel anxious or miserable anymore. Because last night I gave my life to Jesus. Simone described this as one of the first moments of her own personal conversion. I knew it was the truth. It was my first step in sharing that with somebody. Seeing how it could transform another human being when that person didn't have hope. Meanwhile, the young girl, Anne, was very sure it was Christ who had sent Simone to share her room. Anne told her, they put you in my room for me to help you, but in the end, you helped me. If someone said, you can go back and change all the abuse, I would say no, because it made me empathetic towards people. Simone said, my hope in sharing my story is to inspire people who are going through the same thing or even something similar. If I came out of it sane, so can you. And it's by God's help that I did. And the credit goes completely to God and to Him working through human beings as well, through the ambassadors of Christ. Gianna Simone is seen with the eyes of faith. Our faith isn't ever in the abstract because God isn't in the abstract. Our loving parent will still ask us to grow in faith in specific ways. Through the words in sacred scripture or through the guidance of the church. Sometimes it will be through struggles. Sometimes it will be through inspirations that we receive either in our hearts or through other people. Just think what happens in this building every night. Some of you are laughing. What usually happens in this building every night? People get drunk. Seriously. A lot of people come in to drink and a lot of people self-medicate and get drunk. But, it might be that one night when one of the patrons here says something to another patron, just like Simone did, that that patron can change the other patron's life and not even know. That happens. You know how they kid and say the bartender is like a psychiatrist? <laughs> because he listens to, you know, or she listens to everybody's stuff. Did you ever think of the bartender indirectly as an ambassador for Christ, that Christ is working through that bartender that helps the patrons here in some way. Maybe not immediately. It might take many a visit, many a drunken stupor, but it does happen. I've seen it happen. So again, it's very appropriate that we worship in a place such as here. Because we are the ambassadors of Christ. We are the ones, hopefully, that have the eyes of faith 
ourselves. Perfect all the time? Heck no. That's for sure. But we know how to get, so to speak, get back up on the horse. And we're ready to do it again. Are we going to fall down? Heck yeah. But we get back on. So today at Mass, let's ask God, and if you don't want to talk to God, being May, uh, the month of May, let's go to the back door and talk to Mummy. Talk to Mary. Now sometime as a kid, you didn't want to go to Dad, so you kind of weaseled around Mother. Mom, would you talk to Dad for me? Because, uh, we can do the same thing in our spiritual lives. Talk to Mary. You know, that's cool. There's nothing the matter with that. And let's ask to show us where he's asking us to grow in faith every day. A good way to do is to ask, where is it hardest for me to trust in God? I know in my own experience, and I'm going to share something with you that I, very few people know. After I lost my fourth principalship in a Catholic school because of being a gay man with a husband, that was the hardest because that was the school that I was the founding principal of. When I got to Colorado, there was a hole in the ground, and I was in a trailer, and I took it from there. And nine months later, Ave Maria Catholic School was there, with kids, with a curriculum, with teachers. The first Catholic school in the nation to have a full special ed program. That's because you had a thick head of Portuguese there as a principal. And then two years later, the bishop finds out, and I'm out. I'll be honest with you, I tried to commit suicide. Because I figured, what, what good was I anyway? Four times, and I got knocked down, and I love Catholic education. And then when it didn't succeed, guess what? Did I have the eyes of faith? No. I got ticked off of God more because I couldn't even do a suicide right. <laughs> what, are you trying, what do you want me here? Why do you want me here? One day Graham came home and I was in the office on my hands and knees pounding the floor in front of the crucifix. I was that ticked off. But then it was like I got a V8 moment. For well, those of you that watch NCIS, you know a Gibbs moment when he hits you in the back of the head? It's like that's what Christ did to me. And he said, Jim, wake up. You have the faith. I still want you here. You need to be my ambassador. That's what it took. So we will all have our good times and our bad times, but we can't lose the eyes of faith. Right now, I'll be honest with you, I am struggling with Richard's death very much. There isn't a day at home that I don't cry, and I wonder, why? But then the eyes of faith are there, and I know Richard is there as our advocate in heaven right now. According to Joel, last week he might be coming to haunt some of us. <laughs> but that's still being a good advocate. That's still being a good advocate, because he might be the one that gives us the little V8 moment and say, wake up, dude. We need you. Christ needs you still. So don't get down. Don't get down. Cannot lose the eyes of faith. And as you saw in the in the second reading, the apostles did in the small community started to lose the faith. And that's when they had to get their little V8 moment. Say, pick up, pick up. You know, and it will happen to us. But never, ever, please don't lose the eyes of faith. Your turn.
I go sit down now. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing me to 
open my eyes and see the world one more time. Because I know that in my slumber, I may not open my eyes again. And that just keeps my faith going all the time. But keep one thing in mind, folks. Don't let your faith be on fear. Because no Well, Mary's everywhere, of course. Um, she's she doesn't like the spotlight, so she kind of hangs out in the back. But um, but Luke and uh, Saint Clara, very Luke and Clara honor her a lot. So. Let's continue by declaring our creed inside the body. I promise to see what is good for my sisters and brothers everywhere, rejecting injustice and inequality, and living with the freedom and responsibility of a child of God. I promise to work with the realization of God's vision harmony and right relations among all peoples, rejecting the idols of money and property. I promise to seek peace and to live in peace in one human family, rejecting prejudice in every form and all barriers to unity. I promise to cherish the universe and this precious planet, working creatively to renew and safeguard the elemental sacraments of air, I believe in God, the great spirit of creation, in Jesus, the simple servant of justice and love, who lived among us so that all might live with one fullness. I believe in the breath of God's love, the spirit who continues the work of forgiveness and reconciliation, of birthing and blessing, of challenge and hopefulness, so that together we can continue with work of creation. Jesus promised the gift of the Holy Spirit, and his word is true. United as one family, in that spirit, let us bring our needs before the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, give strength to your people. For the world leaders, that God may guide them into the way of peace, let us pray. Lord, give strength to your people. That those who are troubled and afraid may find peace in the gospel of Jesus and become aware of his caring presence. Let us pray. Lord, Lord give strength, strength to your people. That the Lord's disciples and ambassadors today may not extinguish the spirit, but learn to recognize him at work, in the world, and in the church. Let us pray. Lord, Lord give strength, strength. Paul and Barnabas urged the followers of Jesus to persevere in faith. May we too encourage one another to follow the way of Christ. Let us pray. Lord, what other intentions do we bring before our eternal parent? Let's remember all those who have passed away, especially as we remember Father Daniel Barrington and all of the rich and minister, we pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord give us your people. I'd like to pray for my friend Tony uh, recovering from surgery on her feet. And I'd like to pray for my neighbor Deborah, who's bipolar and has very bad health no problems. And I finally saw her yesterday and I haven't seen her in many months. Lord, give strength to your people.
Chakles? Chakles. Chakles was a, a person who was at the Parliament House for eons, eons for eight years. Months. And uh, he had his memorial service this week as well. For those we pray. The Lord is And for the success of the fringe, it will be here at St. Matthew's. And also for Joel's series that begins tonight. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And for all the intentions you hold deep within the silence of your hearts. And for all those that are listed on our parish's website, we also pray. Lord, people. Heavenly Father and Mother, take pity on our restless hearts and troubled minds, and grant us the peace and love of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory here will be number 500. You will very
pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to our eternal parent. In the Lord, Lord such a sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's church. Our loving parent, as we present these gifts today, we ask you to come with your son and make your home in each of us and in our communities. We make our prayer through the Holy Spirit, whom you send in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to God. Thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and with all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all. 